Welcome everyone, we're so happy you're here. I am here talking to Brad from Level 99 Games. Brad, hey. this Level 99 is a company that I have heard so much about over the past few years. Thanks. Every time I'm like in a, a deep dive on a subreddit and board games or like a Facebook group or something, Level 99 both comes up fairly often and when it does come up, it's like the commentary is always super positive and people are just really advocating for you guys. Um, which got my attention. And so now you're here and I'm, I'm glad that we're able to kind of introduce you to our audience. I wanna know what is the history of Level 99? Where'd you guys come from and kind of how did you get to where you are right now? Well, it's been a long, long time. Uh, this year is actually our 10th anniversary at That's Level 99 incredible. Games. So um, we incorporated back in 2010. Our first product was Battlecon War of Indians and that mm -hmm. released in 2011, at the end of the year. So. Um, where next year will be the 10th anniversary of Battlecon. And, um, well, to give a little background, um, I'm a big fan of video games, but I've also been making board games my whole life. It's been yeah. something that I really love to do. That's something that uh, I would, you know, I'd make games and play with my mom and dad, mm -hmm. you know, as a kid. <laughs> and that was our family time. And it, was, it was super fun for me. So uh, as I grew up, I started making games for my friends and, uh, and so forth. And all throughout high school, I ran like a CCG that, you know, it was That's like true. of all the like, you know, whatever TV shows we were watching or whatever characters we were excited about were to show up in there and it was great fun. So it was like a know. universal CCG system and then you would just put the kind yeah, of flavor just of the make, like an expansion for whatever the flavor of the month was, pretty much. That's... You know, someone would be like like, hey, my, my vampire deck needs more, you know, more characters from, from the Helsing anime. And so I would I would get, go and, you know, watch the show and then put in all these characters and then, you know, like That's somebody else would want their their next thing and you know, and so I'd it was kind of directed by, but anyway, so uh, all throughout my gaming uh, career, it's it's been about making games for the people that are playing them, mm -hmm. right? And uh, and for reaching out directly to those folks. So, you know, um, I guess it's uh, I'd say it's it's not a surprise that uh, that people enjoy the games because we make them specifically for them. I was gonna say it's amazing, like actually seeing the offerings that you have. It's, it's really very much in line with that initial concept you're talking about of mm -hmm. having a system that you can kind of put things into that people want, right? Yeah. Like we're looking at the Shovel Knight Exceed expansion here. And there's other Exceed, like I, there's like a Kin Ryu there's one a, as there's well. There's a yeah? Street Fighter set. And then before that, we had two other sets, one being our, um, our own original IP called Seventh Cross, which was a sort of Monster Hunter, Bloodborne, Dark Souls esque mm -hmm. game, and then we had uh, Red Horizon, which was on loan from our friends at Jasco Games, yeah, and um, who also assisted us in doing Street Fighter um, in Exceed. So I come from kind of a programmer background, uh, mm -hmm. and that was what I was trained in, and so I'm interested in building big, robust systems that have a lot of flexibility and that have a lot of template ability, so that we can build a strong foundation and then build upon that foundation for years and years to come. And so it took us about two years to develop the baseline of Exceed. And same for our Battlecon and Millennium Blade, some of our other well-known games. Now, what, what led you, having done all of this you know, throughout your, as you said, career in games, what led you to actually incorporate and get this thing moving? Like, what well, was the spark there? I um, was, was actually in the recession of uh, 08. I was working as a contract programmer, I was making iPhone apps, <laughs> and um, I was the junior programmer on the team. So when the recession came, I got laid off. And um, from there, I decided, well, I'm going to make apps on my own. So I made some RPG uh, tools. I made cool. a DM toolkit, an RPG cartographer app for the iPad, stuff like that. Um, and that went pretty well, well enough that I was able to stop doing any like personal contract work and focus fully on doing stuff for level 99 and that was uh, so a few years after that I actually set up the company and around mm. that time in about 2010 uh, I saw Kickstarter start to blow up yeah and I saw TMG's eminent domain on Kickstarter and I was like well I could do that <laughs> and so I got together the game that I'd been working on in my spare time which was Battlecon War and I had hired, you know, like five or six different artists on DeviantArt to do two or three characters each. Wow. And um, the, uh, so I, I put it up there on Kickstarter. We made about uh, $26,000. Mm -hmm. um, it cost me about $50,000 to finish <laughs> and deliver the project. And um, that was the start of Level 99 Games. Yeah, great. You're starting <laughs> so, off well in the black on that one. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> um, but... Um, 
the game caught on. Like the, we printed a couple extra copies to send to distribution and those sold out quickly. And when we launched the follow-up, which was Devastation, a, um, a bigger box with 30 different fighters in it, that game uh, sold 150,000 on Kickstarter and wow. we really uh, took off after that point. And that was the so, moment. Mm -hmm. Did you continue to build the company past that, or is it still just you making games, putting them on uh, Kickstarter? It's been it's been ups and downs. Um, we've had as many as like ten full timers, and mm -hmm. as few as just me. And yeah. it's it's been up and down. Um, we the first time we had a, I guess I would say um, we got a warehouse, and I started trying to do fulfillment services, but you got to be real tight with every penny when you're doing mm. fulfillment, and I'm mm -hmm. not that strict. <laughs> And I'm not that strict with my staff, and so um, it ultimately the cost overran, and I yeah. had to close that up. Um, but now I have a kid at home. My daughter was born back in October. Well, congratulations! Yeah, right. um, and so I had to get an office because I have two uh, staff members now, three in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I, I don't have three people in my yeah. house every day <laughs> while uh, my wife is home with uh, with Catherine. So that's uh, so we've got an office now, and we've yeah. got permanent staff. But uh, it's just four people at the moment. Well, five people at the moment. Uh, nice. One of us is overseas and does our community management and playtesting and such. Um, Beautiful. So he's with the nighttime community, which is nice. Uh, so we have 24-hour support in that case. Would you say that, um, that the Exceed fighting system was kind of... Would you say it's a, a better realization of BattleCon, or is it a totally different tangent of what you guys wanted it to is, do? Well, I guess... Um, Exceeds here on the table, but I should give a little context to Battlecon too. So these are both fighting card games. Mm -hmm. Battlecon is very much, um, I would say, very much chess, and Exceed is poker. If cool. that makes sense, and yeah. it's it's the same kind of idea in that um, I'm trying to defeat my opponent. I pick a fighter. I get all that fighter stuff. There's no collectible collectability or deck building or anything. It's all about how am I going to use the tools I have to succeed. Uh, so in that sense, the games are very much the same. Where they diverge, Battlecon has full information. There's no shuffling. There's no randomness. Mm -hmm. I know exactly what I've got. And it's very much... So when you have that full information, the game becomes very strictly about understanding exactly what your opponent can do, yeah. working around it, and counterplay. Um, Exceed, on the other hand, is it's got decks. You shuffle your decks, and so you don't have full access to your, to your card pool at all times. And so what that means is that even if a move is suboptimal, if I'm in the right situation, I can play it. And sometimes if I'm even in the wrong situation, I can play it and my opponent can't answer it. And so um, Succeed is a game that lets you play more according to your gut than mm -hmm. according to the, uh, to, the, to the optimal strategy. Yeah, the absolute and, analytical reality in front of you. Yeah, yeah. and so, um, and so there, there are different paths. And some people really love Battlecom because they want to know exactly what, you know, and whenever something happens in Battlecon, it's your fault, right? Yeah, yeah. You win, you did good, you <laughs> lose, uh, it's it's on you. But uh, in Exceed, you know, you can blame the deck. And mm -hmm. that's fun too, because sometimes you just want to be, you know, that kind of ungavaga fighter and yeah. throw everything out and uh, and play on tilt. And Exceed lets you get away with that in a way that um, that's very satisfying. Yeah. So, of course, you can play Exceed very deeply and strategically too. The game mm -hmm. gives you a lot of tools for hand management. So you're never really stuck with something you don't want, but um, it's a different paradigm, and I think they're both worth playing to decide which one you like best. Well, yeah, so that's a that's a question coming from app development and, and the video game background that you have. Why go through all the trouble to make these physical products instead mm -hmm. of just developing a video game or an app that is essentially doing the same thing here? Yeah, well, app development is difficult and it's expensive, <laughs> and uh, we actually did do a BattleCon Online adaption um, last year. The actually, sorry, it was five years because we started it back in 2015. Wow! And um, it uh, well, app development is difficult. Yeah, and yeah. it's available on Steam now, <laughs> but uh, we haven't had uh, an opportunity to do more updates right. uh, in the recent past. Um, perhaps that'll change in the future. But what we found is that um, honestly, the the tabletop games resonate more with our fans. Um, even when we had Battlecon Online, it was reaching a bunch of people, the kind of people that were interested in um, being a card of the community and really getting deep into it, uh, said that they'd preferred the physical cards. Yeah. So, um, so we decided, you know, let's just play to our strengths and uh, and continue to work with physical development and, you know, kind of put a slowdown on the digital. 
Yeah, well, so. I think it's relevant because your your website right now is talking about how these are tabletop games in a video gamer's essentially world or like mm -hmm. a video game timeline. Yeah. Uh, what does that mean to you in terms of the design process and the products that you're wanting to make? Well, there is, um, you know, what it, what's fun about playing a video game, right? For for me, it's about you know the huge breadth of content, um, being able to get new content pretty regularly from the developers. It's about having a community to play the games with, and it's about this kind of deep discovery because video games are immensely replayable. I mean, there's mm -hmm. always another piece of armor or another boss to fight or another build to explore, and so we try to make games that capture those ideas. Mm -hmm. Like uh, so, it, like in Exceed, you know, there's there's more characters coming out all the time. Each character has many levels of mastery. You can play them in a lot of different ways. And, um, and it lends itself to that kind of community. So the same things that you like about video games, mm -hmm. you can like about level 99's games yeah. on the tabletop. Um, Millennium Blades is another great example. I actually, so this is a game about uh, collectible card games. Have you played Millennium Blades? I haven't. Uh -uh. So Millennium Blades is a board game about a group of friends that play a collectible card game, which is also <laughs> called Millennium Blades. And you start with your starter deck and you buy and sell and trade cards um, in real time. And then after like 20 minutes of trading and buying and selling, they, everything stops and you have to play a tournament with whatever deck you managed to build. Wow, that's fascinating. And um, after some tournaments, whoever has acquired the most glory uh, by winning tournaments and building collections becomes the world champion. So wow. I came up with this idea after playing um, those uh, Mobaji Gachapon games. Sure. And like it's so much fun to just flip over a pack and see what you get. <laughs> Why don't I make a game about opening booster packs? Yeah. And Millennium Blades was born from that uh, that idea. Is anybody clamoring for like an actual Millennium Blades collectible card game to be released? Uh, some people have asked me about it, but I don't I don't really want to do a Millennium Blades actual CCG, right? Yeah. Um, that I think would uh, it would it would be too close, right? Yeah. What I would really like to see is you know is to expand the idea of these meta games. What about a game that is about managing an esports team? Right? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Um, what about a game that is just about, um, you know, I'd say like the economics or the lifestyle of gamers, that's and that's uh, that's where that I think the series really that, shines. So how do you, you know, if you want this endless replayability aspect, and that really revolves around necessarily new releases or new content fairly mm -hmm. often, how do you balance the cadence? of releases for your current systems versus the desire to make new systems? Because I imagine mm -hmm. as a programmer, as somebody who has this kind of inside of them, you're constantly probably thinking about the next big system you could create. Mm -hmm. How do you balance those two things when you're running a company like Level 99? Well, it's pretty tough. And uh, this is actually um, you know, where, we, where we were last year, is that we were working on a lot of projects in, uh, in parallel. Mm -hmm. And we've had to back off on that. It, wasn't, it really wasn't coming together for us. We yeah. the whole team focused on a single project in order to make a timely release. So we've changed our game plan and we've been focusing more on, on you know, completing single projects at a time with right. everybody together. So that's going better for us this year. Um, but to go back to the, the full question, so uh, one way to balance it is to have everybody do something different, which actually yeah. doesn't work <laughs> as I discovered. <laughs> but um, Well, you're out there trying things. Yeah, you know? you gotta... we're trying things. <laughs> but on the other side... Um, the uh, other thing I think is that we just have to understand, you know, where the lines are for things. Mm -hmm. And creating good systems um, allows me to be able to work on systems and on the business without necessarily getting my feet too wet in the deep development. So, like the new system of Exceed was designed and published by, or really built from the ground up by our development team, mm -hmm. and um, and I didn't have to do too much except look at it and say, yeah, this is really good. Nice. Uh, you know, like let's take it to press. Yeah. So. Um, so it gives us a way to kind of let, you know, let fans who are going to go deeper with the game, and not, I would say fans, but our developers as well, that want to go really deep with the game to um, to explore that. Mm -hmm. For me as a designer, I can't fathom it the way that competitive players play it. It's true. I'm a casual. Okay, I'll admit yeah. it. When it comes to these games, like I'm casual, but I play it for the like, you know, like wow, let's like see where this goes. Like, what kind yeah. of crazy things can yeah. we do? And um, you know, and there's another kind of person that looks at it from a tournament balance perspective and says, "How can I make this really fair mm -hmm. and for and fun for everybody playing?" And um, you know, so we have to respect both sides of that equation. Yeah. Do you, Do you find that whenever people get these releases and start to really drill into them, that 
you need to, uh, you know, as the video game uh, metaphor holds, you need to patch them in some way. So like, do you have an errata system or anything like that that is like, oh, oops, yeah, that is a little too strong. It's a good, it's a good question because we've actually done it two different ways. And actually there's a great contrast between Battlecon and Exceed because Battlecon is kind of a staple where Exceed is more of a living style game. Mm -hmm. And so in Battlecon, we're now on the fourth edition of the game where, you know, wow. patches come out and we change, you know, a couple of baseline rules and, you know, maybe add a new trigger to make things clearer, stuff like that. So fourth edition Battlecon is coming out in August. Um, and we have continuously kept those in print. Even our the original one, War, you can still get it right now. Yeah. Um, so that's one way to do it. The other way with Exceed, um, we have a, uh, a rotation where things go forward. And so every we support in tournaments and with organized play about the last two years of products that have come out. Mm -hmm. And if something's older than that, we just rotate it out. So with Exceed, we don't need to issue errata because we know that the old sets will eventually just not be legal and they won't be in print anymore so it'll be pretty hard to get your hands on them anyway yeah that makes sense and uh so we say like exceed faces forward is the motto that we have in our in our dev teams cool. and you know when the question comes up well how will this play with the old stuff we're like oh we don't care yeah <laughs> <laughs> which is a lot easier response to give <laughs> yeah do you see i mean do you see exceed and BattleCon and even millennium blaze I, as I, I i gather that those are the three main systems that you guys are currently working under there's some board we games have, as well uh, i believe we have one more uh which is pixel tactics which i actually have over here um i may be off uh, off sides yeah, but thanks. pixel tactics if you're into like wargroove or advanced wars disgaea final fantasy tactics like that's the style of game that this is and that yeah. was our probably actually the second game that really took off for us we did a mini game library and it had six small games inside the box and one of those games was the original Pixel Tactics. Very cool. And it caught on so much that we just printed it solo. And then we printed Pixel Tactics 2, and then Pixel Tactics 3, and then 4, and then 5, and then Deluxe, which is a huge box. Um, actually, I've got it over here. Ooh, Pixel Tactics Deluxe, which is a storage box for all of them. Nice, um, yeah, cool. As well as its own expansion. And, then, and so those are all different. So like those are different are. experiences. They're all different the experiences. And, but what we found is that um, unlike, say, you know, playing Mega Man 4, or, um, you know, like people felt like they, you know, before you play the others, people felt like they needed to have played one, two, and three before they got Pixel Tactics oh, four. Right on, yeah. So Pixel Tactics six is actually Pixel Tactics Legends. They're all starter sets and you can play any of them first. Uh, this makes it a little bit clearer having a subtitle that's not, um, you know, it's not a number. Yeah, it's not a number, yeah. So that's uh, where, we are, where we are with that. Um, and are all these games one versus one? Uh, so Battlecon can go one to five. Um, like free for all you can uh, actually you can play teams or you can Very play cool. one two three or four players versus one and you can mm. have a big boss that has you know all kinds of crazy powers and bonuses nice. and fights against the others and then for pixel tactics 1v1 and then exceed is strictly 1v1 as well millennium blades goes from two all the way up to uh six and it actually goes one to six with the um with the expansion yeah sorry one to five i'm speaking It'll be six with Collusion, which is the next Millennium Blades expansion. Millennium Blades Collusion, you have you have teams, so you team up with people at tournaments and uh, play in teams against your opponents. That's so funny. Like literally, our uh, Team Coven and our like website name came from when Zach and I were a team playing the Star Wars trading card game. Oh, you know, okay. When we were like in Chelsea and doing our own thing, and we would go compete in events as a yeah. team. You know. Um, it's funny how that stuff is still around and still very relevant, honestly. Yeah, it's a lot it's of so fun. so much fun to have a group like that that you're like, ah, oh, we're trying to win together kind of mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Well, with Millennium Blades, we tried to like come up with things that are generally negative in like, the CCG space and, and flip them on their head. So the yeah. first expansion for the game is called Set Rotation. And, and it's just a bunch very of new, cool. <laughs> new, new cards for you. And then so, you know, Collusion is, is you know, what's not yeah, a lot of tournaments. Yeah. But that's the name of the team expansion for the game. <laughs> So we, we, you know, it's, it's, it's very tongue in cheek. It's very, it's a lot of really good culture humor. And if you've yeah. played any CCG in the last 20 years, you'll recognize a ton of stuff. Do you see all these games just continuing to expand over time? I um, mean, do you, do you have a sunset in mind? Do you, do you think of this as a, an experience that can end? Or is it the dream of all game players, which is the game that I decide to commit myself to is going to go on forever? I mean, that's the dream, right? Is that yeah. when you get involved with the game and you really fall in love with it, that it'll keep going um, for, and... You know, for me, um, I work for the fans. My goal mm -hmm. is to keep the game going as long as people want to play it. Yeah. And uh, it seems like people want to play it for a long time. <laughs> well, <laughs> what we hear online, you, yeah? we've, got, uh, we've got a lot of people that are excited for, uh, for this new season of Exceed and for what's coming up next. 
So um, I think we've got a lot of cool stuff on the horizon. Well, I want to ask you a, a couple of things, kind of a little industry forward, since we are here sure. at Gamma. Um, I noticed that you, as compared to some other uh, publishers and smaller publishers, um, are you have an online store that seems to be very good. I mm -hmm. mean, I looked at it and it's like, oh, this is a great store. You sell online, other, other online distributors, retailers will sell your products online. Local retailers have access to sell your products, mm -hmm. some products on Amazon. They're all over the place. Um, so what's your what's your you know sales strategy? What are you thinking uh, when you you know are getting all of your games through all of these different channels? Are there pluses and minuses? Is this something you've considered a lot, or you just kind of get we've, them out there? We thought a lot about it, but uh, my my philosophy is to reach people where they are. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to get the game on Amazon, then we got it on Amazon. If you want to go to your local game store, we can go to your local game store. If we want it, you want to come direct to us, then you can come direct to us. You know, hopefully we get on Kickstarter with uh, with you know as many games as as people want to buy there. So people are shopping in different places, and people trust different outlets. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's important to reach people where they're shopping. Yeah. Right? Um, so yeah. So I guess I'd say that saturation is the name of the game, and there are enough channels that you can make just about any channel reasonable for both you and the sellers in that channel and the end customers. Right on. But a a game company today. You can't rely on the um, you can't rely on on like Field of Dreams marketing, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you build it, they they won't they won't come. There's a thousand <laughs> other games that, that release this month, so you really have to get out there and show the world what you're making. And yeah. um, for me, I guess I'd say I'm a bit of that cloistered artist type, and it's it's tougher for me to say like, look at the thing I made, try yeah. it. But that's what you got to do, and so. Uh, you know, I've been I've learned to become a bit of a, a an extrovert over the past yeah. ten years, um, <laughs> just so that I can share my work with the world. Yeah. Well, what would you say? You know, we're retailers. We have local retail. We do online retail as well. And one of the questions that we're kind of passing around Gamma this year is asking publishers like you, what is it that you wish that the local retail environment, and local retail stores, were doing more or better? to better support your games and would make you happier with how the retail environment is currently functioning for hmm. games in general. Um, you know, is it more exceed tournaments? Is it is it buying into organized play more? Is it demoing your games? Is it changing the models entirely? Like, do you see a world where this needs to be different than what it is now? I I think that the most important thing that a retail store can do these days is to create an environment where players want to come to play games. You know. Uh, if you ever read any of the like marketing for Starbucks, mm -hmm. um, you know Schultz talks about turning the company into a, a third space. You know, there's home yeah. and there's work, and what else? And that's what the modern game store has to be. It has to be the place where people come together over their shared love of a game. Mm -hmm. And you know, when, I think that when people with similar interests come together, you know, everybody has a great time. And a game store that can create that atmosphere. Um, there's really nothing more you need to do because people will flock to it. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I'd like to say have have exceed on the shelves, right? <laughs> um, but you know, I think that the onus is on us as publishers to um, to help our fans find you guys, and also to provide something for fans to do when they get there. So you know, we're working on our end, creating a more robust organized play system, give people a reason to come out and play the games and have fun. You know, to get some prizes, to get something they can't get anywhere else except the stores, and um, you know, just give you a reason to get out of uh, you know, get out of your bedroom and go see the world. Yeah, absolutely. Because <laughs> it's so tempting to just sit there and play games online. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you so much for giving us a rundown of all this. This is um, it's nice to see it all actually on the table and to talk to you about it because I've seen the different titles and the things going on, and I was never quite able to grasp fully like okay there are a couple of different systems here mm -hmm. and then there's expansions for these systems um where would people go where would you suggest like right now if anybody wants to get into your ecosystem yeah. they want to check out your games or or see what you're all about uh, where are the places that they can connect with you guys well if you're interested in level 99 games generally level 99 games.com is is our home page and it's got info on all the stuff we do but if you're specifically interested in Exceed, which I um, imagine a lot of our viewers are since we've had it on <laughs> right here in the middle, um, we just set up a new site. Uh, it's called try.exceedfightingsystem.com. And if you go there, you can actually download a free demo deck and play the game uh, at home. Try it out and see how you like it. And if you do, 
then you know go to your local store and grab a copy of Shovel Knight Exceed, which is brand new and yeah. uh, is coming out this month. And then would you say that if you want to get into any of these things, start with the most recent and maybe work backwards? I would or? say that um, I would say that with that with most of our games, it gets better and better over time. So yeah. like Legends is the best pixel tactics we've ever done. Uh, Shovel Knight is the most full-featured and probably best balanced Exceed that we've ever done. Um, Battlecon Trials is is actually out of stock right now <laughs> um, because it was it was it was really good. Uh, we're reprinting <laughs> that, but you can get uh, Battlecon War Remastered, which is the uh, the new uh, latest edition of Battlecon, and that's a great place to start the game as well. Yeah. So um, you know, so we've got a great place. So really, yeah, the most recent releases are a fine place to start, and we try to make sure that people can get into our games at any point in the series. So there's very few things that you can't, you know, like you, you can't start in the middle. Yeah. So Millennium Blades, you got to get the base box, but that's about it. Great. Well, thank you so much, Brad. I appreciate you taking the time to do this. And thank all of you uh, for watching. This is Level 99 Games. It seems like, again, from everything I've seen, everybody loves Level 99. So uh, we might be added to that list soon, and maybe some of you out there watching will be added to the list soon. We appreciate your viewership, and until next time, keep playing.